Yo, what's going on guys? Goji Center just uploaded a video that I've never been more, I think this is like peak. This is my peak favorite Goji Center video so far and I haven't even seen it. Can Toothless survive Skull Island? Like that beautiful little black dragon from How to Train Your Dragons? There's no way, dude. He's gonna get massacred. It's gonna be awesome. No, he's probably gonna be near invincible and kill everything. I don't know. I could hope he gets eaten though because that would make so many people sad. It'd be hilarious. Subscribe to Goji Center down below. We gotta get them to 1 million. Leave a like, subscribe here too and let's go see this thing die. Oh man. Today on Goji Center, we will drop Toothless the Night Fury into one of the most dangerous biomes of all time. An unforgiving hell packed with all sorts of bloodthirsty creatures that would not think twice before making an attempt on making this guy their next meal. They Skull are thirsty. Island. In this episode, we will find out whether or not Toothless will be able to call Skull Island home while reviewing all of his special abilities, physical attributes, and intelligence to determine whether he will live to see the next day or be turned into something someone else's lunch. I was wondering, see, they just showed Kamazots. I was wondering if he would go up against Kamazots because Kamazots lives under Skull Island and it's a huge aerial competitor. Not much else in the sky to fight this guy. There's like nothing aerial bound on Skull Island unless those like little birds or nothing. But like Kamazots is there and he's a beast. Pretty sure he basically kills Kong. I can't remember how Kong survives. How did he survive? Love dragons, monsters, dinosaurs, kaiju, then don't just sit there. Hit that subscribe button, like this video, and get ready to witness this Night Fury's attempt to survive the bloodiest island in history. Oh my god. Before we figure out where Toothless ranks in Skull Island's food chain, let's first talk about how you can make feeding yourself easier with HelloFresh. Oh my god, I just did a HelloFresh commercial also, it's so funny. Okay, that was a rough transition, sorry. <laughs> but still, <laughs> us editors at Goji are super busy putting these videos together and barely having any time to do anything, let alone cooking. So enter America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh. Hit the link in the description now or go to HelloFresh.com, use the code, and you'll see this counter in the description increase after you place your order. So use their code, dude, get some HelloFresh stuff, get some awesome discounts with their code. Huge thanks to HelloFresh for supporting the channel. And now let's catch up with Woo! Toothless, who should have made landfall on Skull Island by now. Night Furies are a species of quadrupedal dragons that are featured in How to Train Your Dragon. We should also mention that these are among the strongest, if not the most powerful, species of dragons. These are considered strike-class dragons, which are characterized by their exceptional bite force, complex levels of cognitive abilities, and most importantly, their extreme flying speeds. That's right, we are really quickly starting to understand that this animal has good maneuverability, which will be extremely useful to its attempt to survive on this island. But there's a whole lot more to this guy. Remember, in Skull Island, there are things that can attack from all directions. Masters of camouflage, deceit, and combat ability. That's basically what I'm banking on right now. Because he's like so incredibly fast. He's so strong. He's like so smart. He's amazing at maneuvering. But there's so many ambush predators, you know? We'll quickly cover the abilities of this dragon and then later match it up against creatures that could give the Night Fury a run for its money. The ambush. Up here, we find that this animal has acute senses. Excellent hearing that allows it to pick up acoustic signals from very long distances. Large round eyes packed with tons of light receptors that allow it to see in areas with reduced visibility, such as fog, rain, snow, smoke, and in dark ambience. But what if it's too dark? Well, you'd be surprised that this guy also leverages echolocation to allow it to see in complete darkness. He's if too fast. For whatever reason, the Night Fury can't see something, he can definitely smell it. That's right, this guy has a very good sense of smell. And for some strange reason, it can apparently smell danger approaching. Moving on to some physical attributes, we find that this dragon won't be the smallest creature in Skull Island, but most definitely not the biggest. This guy measures almost 29 feet in length, around 6 feet in height, and a massive 50 foot wingspan. That's insanely small. I'm taller than Night Fury. Oh my god, I could defeat him. This nope. place is <laughs> medium to large sized winged creatures on this island. But it doesn't always have to fly. Night Furies are also capable of making their way through tough terrain with their flexible claws that can dig into the hardest surfaces. Allow that was kind of a goofy example considering you couldn't even get out of this little circle thing. ...them to literally crawl on any vertical plane. Their tough bodies allow them to resist strong impacts, and its wings can serve as shields, protecting its body from any incoming projectiles. But in the MonsterVerse, having good senses and a durable body isn't a guarantee that you'll stay alive. You need more than that. It just so happens that this Night Fury has a few tricks up its sleeve. In the hidden world, we witness the Night Fury's ability to literally disappear using its cloaking ability, absorbing the surrounding electrical energy to activate reflective properties in its scales. So epic. 
to be invisible for a short time. This, combined with its ability to fly at supersonic speeds, gives this animal a big chance of surviving its first night in Skull Island. I legitimately think that Night Fury could kill Kong. I love Kong so much, but he's just, he'd be like freaking flying all over, hitting him with so many fireballs. Kong would die eventually. Stupid monkey. In this scenario, we will assume that the tail of this Night Fury is fully functional, allowing oh. it to move at its full potential while airborne. Jesus. Note that if this tail gets damaged, this makes the Night Fury fair game to be added on someone else's menu. More on this later. Once landing in Skull Island, an intelligent animal like this Night Fury will first have to figure out where all his needs are met before determining where it belongs in the food chain. Hang on a second. He was brought down by simply a man-made weapon. You know who could throw projectiles better than a man-made weapon is Kong, dude. Kong sniped a helicopter with a tree. So I'm pretty sure, like, if he was taken down in this in, in the first movie, almost every Kong could do it. in the world, including us humans, unconsciously seek to meet the basic biological needs vital for our survival. These include breathable air, water, food, ability to maintain body temperature, Wi-Fi, and shelter. Ah. Our night theory here is no different. Skull Island is a tropical biome, which means that it's a good temperature for this specific animal. If you didn't know, night theories do not thrive well in cold climates making this place suitable in terms of these categories. It's the food and shelter aspects that will be a little bit tricky. In Skull Island, only the strongest creatures, those that fill the upper ranks of this biome's food chain, have the privilege of finding true shelter in this island. To survive the night here, this creature needs to be able to effectively fend off a plethora of monsters located in key areas. Almost all sources of fresh water on this island are populated by crazy predators. Ambush hunters such as the swamp locusts and the siren jaw croc Crocodiles would make the mere act of drinking water a dangerous task. The crocs. Let's say Toothless decides to avoid these areas and rather visit a freshwater lake. Well, meet the Meyer squids, big enough to eat this animal as a snack. The problem with facing these monsters is that they are much bigger than the Night Fury. But we need to bring up another ability. Whoa. One which will render most of these threats obsolete. Whoa. Yeah, you probably thought we forgot to discuss this weapon, didn't you? This right here is a superheated plasma blast that can be charged to whatever level of power the Night Fury deems fit. It can be as subtle as a concussive blast or powerful enough to destroy entire structures with ease. But are these enough to counter ambushing predators? Remember that Absolutely. before these blasts are fired, there is a short charge-up period in which the Night Fury builds up enough energy to expel from its mouth. Except with ambush predators such as the Siren Jaw, these guys would be able to snap their jaws shut before any blast leaves the Night Fury. Damn. This is where the dragon <laughs> must rely on its senses. Remember, this guy can somehow smell threats, and nothing screams danger more than a massive 60-plus foot crocodile ready to snap its jaws shut. Devil Joe. Uh, or just taking a sip of water puts you in harm's way, you can already imagine what it's like to hunt for food. Adding yourself as a new predator on this particular island is literally asking for trouble. That is because you now have a ton of other predators to look out for and territories to fight over. In other words, competition. Who was that snake that just showed right there? Is there snakes on Skull Island? I would kill for that. Who would be the Night Fury's direct competitors? There are lots of them. Because this guy is a carnivore and would realistically require a lot of nourishment to keep this animal running, small prey wouldn't do the trick here. Other predators hunting the same stuff would be the Icarus Tiger, for instance, a massive feline capable of inflicting euphoric effects on its enemies and dispatching them with its lethal array of weapons. Holy Jesus! Uh, alrighty then. Uh, the Death Jackals pack hunters with <laughs> mandibles as strong as those of a great white animals that swarm their enemies and tear them limb from limb. It's, uh, it's realistic. That is what would happen. There's ferocious hypervores that hold the title of the most relentless predators in the island, armed with prehensile tongues, tails, backwards facing teeth, and extreme durability. Their only weakness is being disemboweled and. Uh, all right, fine. I would argue with it, but realistically, if it just keeps circling and bombing forever, it'd be impossible to kill. Only someone who could snipe it out of the air would stand a chance. It's because of this ability here that this Night Fury so far has a great chance at surviving encounters with land predators at a range. Even with a shot limit, one well-placed shot at any of these animals would potentially be enough to kill or scare them away. Jesus. Without having to worry about missing, since strike-class dragons have impeccable accuracy. So, are there any creatures on this island that actually pose a threat? Well, yes, and here they are. 
Real quick, if you enjoy topics about monsters, dinosaurs, and real-life beasts, go check out the Beast Hub podcast. I Here do! You can kill time listening to upcoming gory, disturbing topics that will be presented by our hosts in grim detail. Was that a person being attacked by a lion over there? Now you're speaking my language. All right, that's it. So, who are these predators that could give pause to this night fury? There are three. The first being the notorious big one, or Skull Rattler, Devil. The Skull Crawler. This animal is the one responsible for taking down Kong's parents and is simply massive. It's everything the smaller skull crawlers are, but at a bigger scale and bigger appetite. You know it's bananas? My Goji Center size chart back there? Goji Center? There it is! It freaking shows the skull crawlers on there too, the one in Godzilla vs. Kong. We all have talked about this before, but it's so much bigger than this one. So much bigger. So what would a Night Fury do in this instance? Fortunately for Sky camp it. these skull crawlers, no matter how big they are, cannot fly. And they can't necessarily shoot anything back, other than a long prehensile tongue that is very limited range-wise. Toothless? We have seen this dragon bravely face off against two foes of gargantuan proportions using firepower that was even able to knock back the Red Death. A dragon who, by the way, measured 400 feet in length and 100 feet in height. So yes, bigger than our big skull crawler. If the Night Fury realizes that this skull crawler is a threat that must be dispatched, it would most likely be able to stay airborne while peppering Whoa, dude. multiple strikes, weakening it, causing it to retreat, or Whoa. even killing it. <laughs> All the while not even making contact with the Night Whoa. Fury. But are there others that can actually fight back? Now we're talking. Our next big threat to the Night Fury would be Kong. Strong assuming muscles. that it would pick a fight with it to begin with. Kong is not a malevolent being and will most likely not try to go after the Night Fury, given that this dragon isn't necessarily out to kill everything. But what if Kong decided to try to eliminate the Night Fury? Well, again with the issue of flight. Kong can't fly, and it most definitely will not be able to catch up to a dragon who can fly at the speed of sound or block several consecutive plasma blasts. The only thing to watch out for is Kong's ability to throw objects. And quite frankly, Kong is also pretty accurate at throwing projectiles also. That's what I'm talking These about, dude. As massive as entire tree logs, other large objects, objects, and even handheld weaponry. Because the Night Fury's mass would not be as heavy as these hurled objects, getting hit by one would immediately kill this dragon if hit on the right spot. It or vaporized it counter said object with its own blast. We aren't saying that this is a 50-50 scenario, but rather a confrontation that would be in Oh my god! ...and maintain a distance while firing deadly projectiles from above. So epic. But will this fight even happen? It's very likely that two intelligent and mostly benevolent beings would begin to form a symbiotic relationship with each other. Yes, both are very curious and intelligent animals, and will eventually detect each other's presence. Meaning that upon their first confrontation, these two would realize that they could mutually benefit from each other. Oh damn it, they'd be best friends. They're both so lovable. Duck, son of a. <laughs> Kong provides land protection for the Night Fury against any potential ambushes while providing sheer strength. And the Night Fury is able to provide aerial coverage in the event that Kong needs to call in an airstrike. It'd be dream as buddies! As this may sound, this is actually possible. In the real world, there are countless times where animals of different species come to each other's aid, providing combat assistance where needed. So two benevolent, super intelligent beings collabing to make living on Skull Island easier shouldn't be a surprise anymore. Can you imagine Kong with a little Night Fury on his shoulder that just does his extra bidding? My God, talk about the ultimate life form. But what about creatures that can fly? Oh. There are several flying creatures on this island, one which is known as a psycho vulture. Animals that drug themselves with puffer fish and go off on a crazy killing spree and fire lightning. Let's not judge, that, that sounds fun. Fairies can actually channel this lightning to help it cloak itself, so not a problem. But there's a titan around here that potentially could put an end to the Night Fury. Hidden in the subterranean caves in this island is a giant bat laying dormant with its minions. Dormant. This is Titanus Camazots, a wingspan that is almost eight times wider than the Night Furies and over 27 times taller. Note that this titan does have its weaknesses, only being able to fight in darker ambience and being sensitive to bright light. Being massive is no longer a real advantage against the Night Fury, but this titan has an ability that could render this guy useless. Wait, oh, I'm so torn. This Kamazots has the ability to draw storms to himself, meaning that the sky necessarily gets blocked out so he could fight, but if he draws a storm, Night Fury could harness the energy of it, the electricity. Oh, my.
Yeah. The Sonic Screech. Whoop! This isn't the Screaming Death's Sonic Roar. In the MonsterVerse, Sonic Roars are actually pretty lethal. Enough to disorient massive entities like Titans making their ears bleed. I forgot about this. Smaller creatures, destroying buildings, etc. During an encounter with Kamazots, the Night Fury would most oh my likely God. trigger this Sonic Screech after a barrage of annoying and painful plasma blasts. Annoying! A screech of this magnitude would cause a shockwave so strong that it would potentially critically injure the acoustic nerves in this Night Fury and Fry probably him. make it difficult to fly. Not to mention the massive swarm of minions that are approximately the size of this Night Fury, and there are hundreds of them. Cloaking would help here as long as it stays away from the sonic roar, making Titanus Kamazot almost impossible to defeat without help. Even with the plasma blasts, this weapon would be hindered by its shot limit. Without enough firepower to bring down this entire fleet of minions, the Night Fury would be forced to fly out of there as fast as possible to avoid getting killed. So after seeing many dangers that live on this island, will the Night Fury survive? The answer is, it depends. <laughs> after seeing the possible outcomes against both ground and airborne predators, it's likely that the Night Fury would place itself on the higher levels of the food chain, thanks to its plethora of abilities. It'd be horrifying though, because its extra senses will keep it alive, obviously, but it's gonna have to be on edge its whole life. That tiger, the skull crawler could be insanely sneaky. The crocodile, everything on there is like, isn't the crocodile basically a giant island that you just basically exist? You don't even know it's a creature until it starts moving, but I guess like it, it or is that another one? That's the one below it. Either way, there, you'd have to be so on guard 24 seven. But it wouldn't be on the very top. As mentioned earlier, facing a Titan with an army is no easy feat. The good news feat. for this animal is that this Titan won't be active during the daytime, but maybe there is a way to share the top ranks of the food chain here. And that's with a hypothetical symbiotic relationship with Kong. As seen in this graphic novel, a collaborative effort was required to bring down Titanus Kamazots. This wasn't done alone, but with help. Similarly, bringing down Kamazots in this scenario would have required Kong's brute force to pummel down this Titan, and the Night Fury's ability to light up Kamazots, disorienting it at a range with a barrage of plasma attacks. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more How to Train Your Dragon, more Kaiju, and more Carnage, subscribe and hit that like button while you're at it. Thank Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This is like my favorite Goji Setter video in a while. It's like it must be a pain in the ass having to come up with constant imaginative ideas. I guess I kind of relate. I have to do that every day for my Roblox channel. But still, this was beautiful. This is a good, this is a good, this is a good one. This is good. I can't speak anymore. <laughs> but you get it. I think that fits perfectly. He'd survive as long as he watches out for Kamazots, Kong's throw, as long as they make friends, and then watches out for ambush predators. He'd survive just beautifully. His kids, however, would probably be massacred as being born on the island with no experience. I don't know. As a first baby, that's scary as hell. That was bananas. Subscribe to Goji. Center link down below. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.